Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Today I'm making myself a new pair of shoes to wear with my prehistoric inspired costume. Now these are the current old pair. They're lovely and well worn in on the top but if you have a look at the soles you can see how very very worn out they are. I put in an extra insole to tide me over for another few shows but uh, they're really past saving now. Now like a lot of my prehistoric outfits there's a huge amount of conjecture that goes into how these things are made. We really do only have a very small amount of evidence about actual prehistoric shoes. So I will be drawing on the known evidence but there's also going to be a healthy dose of well just what works for my particular feet and my particular materials going on. So this is the older shoe currently in existence or the oldest leather shoe I should say because there are some um, plant fiber sandals over in the Americas. So this is the Arini One shoe. It was found in 2008 in Armenia during an excavation by the Department of Archaeology at University College of Cork in Ireland and it's approximately five and a half thousand years old which makes it probably two or three hundred years older than the Ertzi shoe. It's an amazing piece of preservation. It's probably about a UK size 6 which is a 37 euro or US 7 I think. Um, so it's essentially a ladies or an adolescent size probably. A very simple construction but really very very practical. There's a good overview of footwear patterns through time in this book, Archaeological Footwear by uh, Mykita Vulcan. And very very briefly some of the other styles it talks about are the Ertzi one and this particular uh, style is one that was found on a glacier. And whilst they're very, very different, you can see that the sole in both cases is very much essentially an oval style. So there's no separate sole sewn to an upper in these cases. It's very straightforward cutting styles. The Ertzi one of course does have uh, plant fibre cordage and bearskin attached but it's that basic the sole piece just wraps around the sides and the cutting patterns for those have been simplified here. This is the base of the Ertzi one so your foot goes there and the sides just wrap up. This is the one from the glacier. It's a slightly more truncated oval where this becomes the seam at the back and if you think about the Armenian one that has a very similar structure to this although I think there's a little bit of trimming that's gone into it. So we're going to draw on all of this and see what we can come up with for hours. So the first thing I need to do is take a very basic pattern of my foot. So I've got a sheet of brown paper, I've got my feet and I've got a pen. So all I'm going to do is have a good wriggle, lots of rustling. It's quite important not to scrunch your feet up when you do this to make sure you get your most spread out foot shape. And I'm just going to draw around my foot. And that shows me where to place my foot when I make adjustments to this. So you can see that I've worked in big, flat, squashy shoes for a lot of years and I've got big, flat, squashy feet, but that's all right, it doesn't matter. So the next thing we need to do is allow for the fact that we want the shoes to bend up around the foot. And the easiest way to do this is to put your foot back on your template, bring the sides of your paper up and pretty much just work out where it's going to take to get to about the middle of your foot. Don't worry about it being perfect yet. We're going to equalise it, but just bring it up a bit at a time, make a little mark, and you can see how this is giving us a sense of how much leather we're going to need to do this. I'm going to do the same at the heel. So I know how high up on my heel I need this to come. I know where I want it to come on my ankle bone. I know roughly where I want the shoe to tie off. And 
I move my foot again so you can see what's going on here. What's happened is we've ended up with a curve here. And I think that's probably there in the Armenian one. I haven't actually seen any analysis of it laid out flat. But this path shape is pretty much what tends to happen with my versions of this. Now, there's two ways to approach the back. I quite often fold the back of mine up. I sort of origami it up. That's not exactly what you see in the originals. The originals tend to go more for... Uh, it's not quite straight shot like that. They tend to cut more like this and then you sew up the sides. So it is a matter of preference, but I tend to find on the surfaces that I walk on that anything I can do to avoid a seam that rubs or anything with little gaps that might let in dust and dirt and bits of gravel works fairly well for me. So yeah, I might go for this. We'll, we'll see how it goes out. So when you've got your basic pattern, double check a couple of key points. I can see those are slightly off a tangent, so maybe maybe there is better. Looks a little bit more equal. Did my sides pretty much come up to the same point. With the toe here, if my leather's nice and soft, I can do a gathering right onto the toe. If the leather's going to be fairly firm, what might actually be better is to do something a bit more like this and sew the toe section up. So there's there's several ways of approaching this. So mine, I think the leather I'm going to be using is going to be quite soft. So I am going to go with this essentially sub oval variation. So I'm going to tidy that up so that you can see what my pattern looks like and then we'll choose some leather. Your choice of leather is relatively important. Now those Armenian shoes they've analysed as being a thin cowhide and that's a really good choice. Mine today are probably going to be in goat skin which is very thin and has enough stretch to be comfortable but isn't over stretchy. I did a while ago make some in deer skin and you can probably even see on the video just how much stretchier that is. And I personally found deer skin too stretchy for my taste. So do bear that in mind when you're choosing leather. Now, the direction of cut is also relatively important. If you think about how the leather sat when it was on the animal and how the different muscles work, you're going to have stretch in different areas. So most of us are going to have to cut for economy but what you don't want to do is put one piece on that way and one piece on that way unless you have no choice because the odds are that you're going to get a very different amount of stretch. So I will be going for something that makes the best use of my hide. I'll cut one on this side then although it's essentially an identical pattern I'll flip it over and I'll cut the other piece from the other side, roughly the same position on the hide, and then hopefully the strain will be equal. So I'm just going to draw around that with a very, very fine line that hardly shows. I'll cut it out, then we'll sew it up. And here's my pattern pieces. So I've just cut those out. They're mirror images of each other, even though they're essentially identical. I've also cut out two very thin thongs, which I'm going to use to work up the back. So the next thing I need to do is find a small awl or chisel to make some slots in the back and we'll lace up the heels. So something like that should be fine and we're just going to lace these up a little bit like lacing up a pair of sneakers. So leaving just enough at the top to tie off later I'm going down to the bottom hole on the other side and then we'll just spiral round so into this one up through that one into this one up through that one and uh, hopefully that will do the trick
And when you reach the top, we're just going to knot that off. On the inside, the spare piece runs up and almost cushions the seam. Just make sure you've got no twists in your thonging and that'll make sure that it's comfortable. The shoe can have a quick try on now. So you can see that the heel sitting right back is going to make a tiny little turn at the bottom. That's, that's normal. You see that in surviving examples. And then you can just double check that everything is going to line up. So we've got a nice match there, a little bit less on the top, plenty of room to bring the bottom section up. What I'm going to do, I think, is start by um, threading some needles. I'm going to use a linen thread, I think, for this particular patch. So I'm going to use a nice strong cord to represent a bit of plant fibre, just for a bit of variety. I'm going to do a little bit of running stitch along here so that I can pull up the toe and then we'll lace the rest together. Just the very top part of the toe has been given a running stitch. I'm now going to pull that up really tightly and we'll see how it fits over the foot. Looking at that, I think a bit more to be gathered. I think if I gather it round to about there, might be better. Let's try it. That's much better. So you can see that pulled up, that is now enough to properly cover the toe area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that off. I'm just literally going to knot these two ends together, making sure it's pulled as tightly as I can. And then I'm going to crisscross, make cross stitches going up, sort of pleating this down a little as I go. So it's going to bring the rest of this fullness in onto the top of the foot. So I've played around with this a bit and the way I've decided to do this particular pair is I've extended the running stitch up the sides. I'm going to very slightly tighten that to give me the gathers and then I'm going to cross stitch back on myself to close the gap. And for this particular pair, I think that's going to do the trick very nicely. It's all lumpy bumpy at the moment, that will come right. Incidentally, they think there's evidence that humans have been wearing shoes for at least 40,000 years now. There was some um, skeletal studies done on a cave site, I think it was near Peking, and they've managed to show that changes in things like how the toe bones sit and knock-on effects into the leg bones indicates that people are covering their feet, which alters the way you walk. So even if we haven't got really, really early shoes, it's amazing these little tiny bits of evidence that come through. And we're ready for first stage trying on. So they do basically fit and these would work. However, you can see there's a bit of sagginess at the back there. So there's a little bit of fullness here. Now, there's several things we could do about this. I could adjust the back seam, but I think it's probably actually going to be easier to adjust these from the front. So I'm going to give them a really good wiggle and I'm going to work out what I need. And actually, look, it's another little pleat at the front there. So I need to do just a little bit more of this gathering and cross stitching just to take in another little bit at the front and that should resolve most of the, the sagginess and then I think just a lacing, a little bit of lacing to help tie it onto the foot and we'll be ready to wet block it. So this sort of shoe is very much a do a bit, try it on. I've got exactly the same thing here and I can resolve that by bringing the material forwards. So don't be afraid to experiment with these and keep adjusting as you go along. We're on the home stretch with these now. I've punched some holes right around the edge and I'm going to thread some more thongs through so that we can tighten things up. Hopefully you can see how much more that lacing at the ankle makes everything fit. So these are wearable now, but I'm going to improve them by running them under the tap, getting them really wet and then putting them on, making sure they're smoothed really nicely into shape and wearing them whilst they dry out a little bit. So up until this point, these have been fairly reversible in terms of right and left, but now wearing them in, you're gonna see probably from the damp spots, there you are, 
just how they're now going to model themselves exactly to the foot that's wearing them. So I'm just going to wear these until they're dry enough to take off. You can see how much more smoothly they've settled in to shape. All those wriggles and lumps and bumps have pretty much resolved themselves. Even though they're damp, they're really, really comfortable. And you can tell from the footprints that although they give you feet protection, they're really not getting in the way of you feeling the floor beneath you. So we'll let those dry. And those, I think, are ready for my next adventure. There we go, all done. They can finish drying out quietly and you can really see how they've taken on the shape of the foot now.